All right, hey everybody, and welcome to Zenfolio Live. I'm Robert with Zenfolio Customer Success, and I want to say thanks for joining us today on the live stream. Uh, make sure you guys say hi to us and let us know where you're from. If you're hanging out with us on YouTube, we already got Jennifer in there chatting with us. We actually shared one of Jennifer's images. So, hey, Jennifer, thanks for hanging out with us today and sharing that amazing image. Over on Zoom, we've got Alan, Angie, Brandy, Carolyn, Charlie, Earl, Eduardo, Kathleen, Kelly, Robert, and Samuel jumping in. And <laughs> Charlie says he's had too many beers at happy hour. Well, good for you, Charlie. Glad that you're having a good time. Today, we're going to be talking about photo philanthropy, how to use your photography to promote the welfare of others, making an impact, giving back, and inspiring other people. Hanging out with me today, taking care of you guys in chat, both in Zoom and on YouTube. I've got Dennis, so make sure that you guys show Dennis some love. He comes and hangs out with us every once in a while on Thursdays, answers your guys' questions, helps me pronounce things, helps me stay on topic, keeps me from uh, losing focus like I'm trying not to do right now. And uh, Jesse does a great job, so make sure that you guys show him some love. Uh, in the way of announcements, really quick, uh, next week on Zenfolio Live, we are going to talk about using Facebook and Instagram marketplaces to sell your photos. So if you guys haven't checked those out yet, I'm going to talk about linking your Zenfolio e-commerce site to Facebook and Instagram and how you can actually sell your photos through those marketplaces and through Zenfolio's e-com. So definitely make sure that you come back and join us for that. Uh, also, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget you can register for live stream emails. The link to do that is in the description below the video. Those of you guys who are hanging out with us on Zoom, guess what? You've already done it. So you guys are already here. You don't have to re-register. You'll get those emails um, for as long as you want. Um, also, if you haven't checked it out yet, make sure that you go check out that page, zenfolio.com forward slash community forward slash events. You're going to get a good overview of all the live events and the live training and stuff that we have going on and coming up. And then lastly, uh, as always, we're encouraging you guys to share your photos, share some beautiful images. Let's try to inspire people. Let's make our social media feeds much more beautiful than they are because right now I don't even like looking at them, to be honest, with everything that's going on. Um, and hey, while you're doing that, this month we're talking about wildlife photos. So make sure that you share your wildlife photos and use that hashtag Zenfolio Photographers for your chance, for your images chance to be featured on one of our social media platforms or on the Zenfolio Live intro. Okay. Uh, I want to introduce our guest who's hanging out with us today. I'm super excited. She was a professional modern dancer in New York who toured the world with two major companies. And during that experience, her love for photography was born. She has a love for culture and humanity. And as her dance career began to wind down, her photography career was taking off. She describes herself as a people photographer, a travel photographer, and a dedicated photo philanthropist. She volunteers for organizations like the Bold Beauty Project, Jessica June's Children's Cancer Foundation, and the Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital, just to name a few. On her blog, Our Collective Humanity, she creates photo essays to elicit empathy, love, and compassion. Most recently, she's been exploring the world of macro floral photography, finding serenity in nature, and co-creating with Mother Nature. Guys, she has some beautiful and amazing work, but most of all, she has a beautiful soul. Please help me in welcoming Lisa Nalvin to Zenfolio Live. So thank you, Lisa, so much for jumping in here and uh, joining. Let me turn my screen share off really quick. Oh, good. And so... <laughs> you better now, because I was looking at you this one. How are you, how are you doing today, Lisa? I'm, I'm, I'm good. This is my first one of these, so I'm a little nervous, but I'm, I'm, I'm really, what a wonderful introduction. <laughs> well, I'm super excited. I've, I've known you for, for, I think, what, a little, a little over a year now. Um, and I'm just super excited to have you on here because you just have some beautiful stories and just a beautiful soul that I can't wait for you to share with us. Um, really quickly, can you just give us kind of an intro, really, of what got you into photography? Okay, as you said, I was a dancer, so when I traveled, i i got to I got to be on tour. So I I worked as a dancer. Um, I'm from New York City, and I work as a dancer. So when you work as a dancer, your work is actually travel. So I was on tour all over the United States, but all over Europe, a little bit of Asia, and I went to incredibly beautiful places. 
And I was also with you know, uh, great models because they were dancers. And dancers are big hands and will do anything. So unfortunately, I wasn't as good a photographer. I've got tons of, you know, but that was all print. That wasn't even digital. It would be different if it was digital. So I started to get that bug for photography. I always loved it, got myself a camera. But I never did it for work. And it wasn't until I started to wind down out of, because as a dancer, you have a shelf life. So it's like being an athlete. Unless you were going to be a choreographer or you are a, um, um, you know, want to go into academia, which even though I love to teach, that's not what I want to do. So, that's what I'm so I had to come out. I had to do something different. You know, I had to sort of transition in photography just because I met somebody that needed some help and started to teach me. I did not have, you know, real training as a photographer. You know, just on the job, someone teaching me again. That's such a great story. That, and I hear that so much. I mean, that's the, the same for me as well as I was not trained as a photographer. And um, it was just something that I kind of stumbled across. But had there been cameras in your family or or anything like that at all? Or just no. you picked it up one day and... No, I just, I, no, I don't even remember how I got a camera. I must, no. I mean, yeah, we, they took pictures. I mean, I had pictures from when I was young, but... No, nobody was really a camera, but you know, no one really had that. No, it was me. Now, was, and you and you traveled the world with two dance companies, so uh, that sounds like it probably has some pretty interesting stories in its in, in itself. Any any stories you care to share really quickly from that, or? Well, I mean, I danced. You know, I I I got to work with my idol. I went to the high school of performing arts. I went to SUNY Purchase, which which I didn't graduate from, but I went to, which is a very prestigious dance school in New York, and. Um, like I said, I danced with my, yeah, it was, and then my family was also in the restaurant and bar business in the seventies and eighties. So I have quite a colorful life and it also made me able to, um, be a people person because I'm a completely a people person. And I always say that the reason why I'm good at what I do is not because I'm a technically that good. I'm okay. You know, and obviously I can, you know, know how to compose a picture and know a certain amount of stuff, a technical stuff, but it really is my ability to work with people. And, you know, you want to make people feel comfortable in front of the camera. That is 90% of what I do. It's just my interaction with people. And I'm just a people person. Right. And, Absolutely. and I, I will say one other thing, because I was a dancer, I was on the other side of the lens a lot. And when you're being, and my boss, who is an excellent choreographer, or both of them, is that they choreograph a picture. Even when you're taking a picture, they are placing you on a certain part to balance. So I watched that and I was part of that. And I think that also was helpful for me, not only just what it feels like to be on the other side of the camera, but also just visually choreographing an image, you know, balancing it out. But it was totally intuitive. It's not like I, you know, I didn't learn what the rule of third was to weigh into my photography career. I had no idea what that was. Well, now I know what it is. So being on the other side of the camera for so long, how do you feel like that experience um, helped you with what you now do with the photo philanthropy things and, and the people photography and all of that? Because I always hated having my photo taken and that's partly why I got so into photography is I, I was like, well, if I don't wanna have my photo taken then I need to be on that side of the camera. Uh, but how did that experience, how did you take that experience and kind of use it in, in photography? Well, I, I, I think you can empathize with the person who's having their picture taken and they're uncomfortable. I also, you know, I, I think, well, now with COVID, you can't do that. But I'm also comfortable with going up to somebody, you know, putting my arm on their shoulders. And then and when I get into the, you know, the philanthropy stuff that I do, because I work sometimes and go into a, yeah, you know, I work, I, we haven't gotten into this, but one of the things that I do is that I work with a palliative care team at a hospital. And those are the palliative care doctors are the ones that usually when there's an end of life situation just to make you feel comfortable they just make it easier so when you're working with children and babies sometimes and you have to walk into a room where you know that this baby is going to die and soon or i'm even there sometimes i haven't been there during this role and to be able to go into the room and not be afraid you know it just makes me, makes me too but to go in and hug a parent that you don't know but when you go in there and able to look at someone in the eye and make a connection, put your arms around them, touch them, know that you're there, I'm here to do anything I can for you. 
and not be afraid. I, I think that's what's really important. And I know I'm jumping the gun because we've talked about this a lot. So it's really, it's getting out of your comfort zone to do something for somebody else. And to sometimes it is when you're working with people in difficult situations or making a phone call to someone who you know is going through a hard time and you don't know what to say, you do it anyway. Right. I think that's kind of what disarms people when you're, you know, doing what I do when you're going into or you're traveling and you're going into people, the places that people don't trust you necessarily. You've got to make a human connection and a bond and know that this is, you know, that I'm, you know, I'm not here to exploit you. I, you know, whether it is for, you know, something as, as simple as taking a nice family portrait you still are there to make people feel comfortable and be part of the process. You know, I'm not one of those photographers that tells everybody what to do. And, you know, if you don't do it that way, now listen to what I'm saying. That's not what I do. If, if someone really doesn't want to do something or give them the option, like with kids, I would say, well, what picture do you want to take first? And so I gave them an opportunity to boss me around a little bit before I start bossing them around. I mean, I, I jumped completely off topic. Of it's okay. It's okay. So why don't we take a second really talk, really quick and talk about photo philanthropy because that's not really a term that I was used to hearing until probably the past couple of years. And so just to make sure that everybody really kind of knows what we're talking about, can you kind of tell us what that means to you? Right. Well, this is, I mean, I'm sure it's different for different people. But for me, is that I knew from the time that I was young, that service is what I was meant to do. I mean, not, I'm not a saint, but I know that service is something that I know makes me feel good. So when I started taking pictures, and especially when I could not afford to give money, I could give them my time. I volunteered at Bellevue Hospital when I was in my 20s with the Child Life Program. And then as a photographer, although I couldn't necessarily donate money to a charity or foundation, I could give them my time. Um, I could give them my services. And so, but also beyond that is that I got really into it. Um, I, the first thing I think I did was when I was shooting Special Olympics, which I put a plug for Special Olympics, everybody should do it. It's the most, you just have such a more of an appreciation for everything that you have. And it's a beautiful organization with, you know, people that anyone is just so happy to walk over the finish line. You know, it doesn't matter. You could be in a wheelchair, but that. You know, even if there's only five people, that fifth person that goes over the wheelchair, they are ecstatic. And everybody's there. And it used to be they hug. Now they're not allowed to do that. Um, so I, I know that that made me feel so good. And then when people had asked me, I didn't see any reason why I should say no. So I just did it a lot. And I just found myself always offering to do it. And I don't know why that is, but it's just always been something that I do. And I was, um, you know... Uh, I, Robert and I were talking, I'm telling you, Robert and I, but when we were talking beforehand and you would ask me, are there some memorable moments? And I couldn't come up with anything. And then I said to you before, there are so many memorable moments of what it is to be, you know, really doing service and, and knowing how much you're appreciated and what you think, you know, uh, most of the people that hire us can afford to hire us. You know, there are people that will never have professional portrait taking other than maybe right. going to years or something. And when you travel the world, you know, and, and see what people have and don't have, they are never going to have that, you know, and it's just when somebody takes the time, and this is a plug too, you know, you take the time not only to take the pictures, but even if you're just making some four by sixes to hand out, you actually make the prints and hand something to somebody. It's a yes. beautiful thing to do. It's yes. a really, you know, and make people really happy. What do people want to take when something happens to their home? They take their photo albums. Absolutely. Now it's different because it's digital, but still. Right. Now, you, you brought up the Special Olympics. Was that kind of your first experience with this type of work, or did you get involved through through a different a different organization? That was the first time when I first moved to South Florida, which is where I live now. I volunteered for Special Olympics for maybe, I don't know, 10, 13 years. And then I got, I, I'm heavily involved with children with cancer, um, the, I, I photograph uh, mixed ability I'm, because I'm a dancer and I actually still dance occasionally with um, mixed ability dancers, like people in wheelchairs. And um, so I do that. Um, like I said, it, the, the hospital I go into regularly, I do all kinds of stuff, special needs adults. I don't know. 
so that was one of the that was one of the first things. But since I've been down in Florida, you know, it's just this been a lot of them. Too many. Of them. <laughs> yeah. So, how did um, how did this kind of go from something that because because on, on your on your on your website you define yourself as a dedicated photo philanthropist. So. I'm curious to know how did this kind of go from something that you just had an interest in to it becoming a full on passion. Can you kind of walk us through that a little bit and kind of tell us that story? Well, um, first of all, I'm 65. So I've been, I would say that I've been taking pictures for certainly 30 years, maybe 30 years, maybe 25 of which have been professional. As all of us know, that the photography business, and I also I also uh, had kids during that time, so there was you know it was more intermittent. But but I worked as a photographer on a lot of different possibilities. And because as the photography business changed, and it's been I, I feel for photographers now it is not easy to make a living. Um, and you know when I got older, I decided that I would. I started my blog where I decided that really my work was going to be focusing more on my philanthropy, even though I will do a, you know, an occasional job that affords me to continue to do what I do. I don't, I work comes to me a little bit, but I don't pursue it as much as I used to. So, um, and I love to travel. So I started making the photo philanthropy really, you know, and I started this blog, which was really hard to do. And I haven't done one in a while. Um, but I traveled, and that was really meaningful to me. And it was all about how to show people to basically walk in a man, another man's shoes through photography, to really show different people through different walks of life in different countries or even here that go through challenging times. Somebody said to me, she called me a storm chaser. Like, you would like to, they go, and, and I said, no, I, I don't chase storms. I, I look for people who weather storms. You know, with gratitude and grace. Right. You know, I'm not looking to, I don't, and I never do anything that exploits, um, you know, exploitative. I'm really careful about that. So whether or not you're going through cancer or, um, you know, I started, actually, what happened was about, um, I guess it was uh, uh, several years ago, my brother had cancer. Had a, and I had to go to MD Anderson in Houston to help him navigate his cancer. And I had gone, I had found this, I, I, I befriended someone who worked in the hospital. And they told me that there was a wedding coming up on the weekend. This was on a Friday afternoon. One of the guys that worked there said that there was a wedding on Sunday morning. And the mother, and she had, they had, the mother and she had a three-year-old child with a gentleman. And they were not married. And they wanted to get married. Um, while she had cancer, she was a terminal, but they wanted to get married before, you know. So what happened was they found out the doctors told her that she was not going to make it to her, um, to the date. So he said that he had to like, all of a sudden he was frantically trying to pull together this wedding for Sunday morning. And I said, well, I'll, let me be your photographer. So this is on a Friday evening, and it was Sunday morning. And I said, I'll be your photographer. So when I, so I, I rolled out of bed on a, on a Sunday morning, and uh, I was just a mess. But I thought there'd be, I've done stuff like that before, so I thought there'd be three people there. It was a whole big to do, and the press had been following that. And once I sort of did that, and um, and that was an amazing experience, watching this girl, who was this beautiful young woman, just, you would never know that she was sick. Um, and then bringing those pictures to her while she was in hospice, she died two, two years later after that photograph. Wow. And that's when I really, that was the impetus. She was my first blog. And I said, I really want to share this experience. Now, if I had to do it all over again, maybe I'll redo it because it's nowhere near as good as I got better at it, you know? So I I, I, will, I will give a plug for Dennis Better Than Perfect. Um, so I can see where I started and where I am now. I'm a thousand times better at it, but it was really hard work for me. It was something completely... Um, just having to, re I thought you could just do a blog. Well, you need a new website to do a blog for it to sit up. <laughs> we do a whole new website. It was a whole thing to do. And I had to learn to write and I had to learn to edit. And so um, 
blogs are a commitment for sure. Blogs are a commitment, um, definitely. And, and guys, as Dennis is saying in the chat, if you guys have, you guys have questions uh, for me or for Lisa, please get them in the chat so we can make sure to get them answered live. Uh, they can be about photography, about you know the type of photography that Lisa does, about Zenfolio, whatever you guys have questions about, please make sure that you get those in the chat because I know that we would be more than happy to, to answer those for you guys. Um, I know you did a shoot over the weekend because you and I talked about that. Um, do you care to share maybe some of the images or maybe that story? Cause it was pretty interesting. Okay. I'll, I'll, when I show you this, I'll show you her picture later down the road because, okay. So I have been following, I have been doing something for something called the Bold Beauty Project, which is a, a foundation that features women who have, you know, that are just different. They could be amputees, they could be uh, emotional, it doesn't necessarily have to show, but it's it's an organization that its photographers meet up with women who face certain challenges and they have been doing uh, exhibitions here. So I had recently, I had photographed my niece who has had quite a bit of trauma and also has cerebral palsy. And when I did the show, which was in uh, Palm Beach last year, I met this woman in a wheelchair i met there were lots of people that were in different dif differently able like they say a woman and i started following her on instagram and i was watching her post um this whole series last month of daily what it's like to live she has a kind of much muscular atrophy so she's in a wheelchair and i don't even know too much about the disease but it's obviously a progressive difficult you know very you know difficult disease and I was just awestruck by her. And just, she was so honest about sharing what it's like. So where she would show what it's like, she showed pictures of her bed where they had chucks, which are things like, they're almost like, a, like you put down for your dog, like mm -hmm. people. So that you, you, know, you don't think about that or even pictures of herself because she, she lives with her boyfriend of, of what it's like. If you ask me questions, you think that we don't have desires like everybody else or what it's like she talked about like a one it gives me chills one or two spoon day like someday she can't pick up one spoon so she wow. described it as like what it could be and it was so you know so honest and i'm going to say this too that part of why it even even my mother had a stroke and my mother passed away like seven years ago and when my mother had a stroke um what was really important and and this speaks to this so i'm not just bringing this up for any reason and I, I explained this to you, when my mother had a stroke, I saw how people started treating my mother as somebody different than who she was. No, she couldn't speak the same way that she could and she couldn't communicate in the same way, but she was the same person inside. She was not that, you know, her brain was not that adult actually, but she just couldn't communicate the same way. And yes, she was different, but I hated the way people treated her as if she was a child. And I think that and that's the thing. When you see people that are different, don't assume that they are not just, they are not defined by their disabilities. And that's what this woman was saying. She was saying, don't see me and don't even feel sorry for me. You know, I mean, don't see me. I'm going to tell you what it's like. And when I spoke and I saw, so I thought, I said, you know what? I haven't photographed in a while because of COVID. And I said, you know what? I'm going to call her up and I'm going to offer to do pictures for her. And I want to do them outside. I will wear an N95 mask so that she's safe. But if she wants to do this, I really want to photograph her. And then when I called her up and talked about it, I said, well, I always say pictures are co-creating. I said, which you mentioned that, which I love that. And I said, well, what do you want to do? Because this isn't all about me. I don't really have an agenda. Yes, I might want to use one on my blog, but it really doesn't matter. I'm not, I don't have any financial gain in this, but I just, this is what makes me feel good. And I want to share this with you. Let's do this together. This sounds like fun. And she said, well, I have this sun crown picture that I really have always wanted because I have a very sunny disposition. She's 22. And I said, she said, and people say, you have, I have a funny sunny disposition in spite of the fact that I have this disease. And her answer is no, I have a sunny disposition. It has nothing to do with the fact it's not in spite of, it's who I am. And I thought, what a great answer. You Absolutely. Know, you know, so that, so that you see her, and then when I went and photographed her, it was her and her boyfriend, her boyfriend and their 
his five-year-old, his, I'm sorry, his, his 14-year-old daughter, they live together, and the nurse. They were such a fun group of people. They were laughing, and she couldn't participate in all the dancing pictures that they were doing on their own, playing with their camera, doing stuff. But it didn't matter. You know, they were completely a team. They were all in a good mood. And she was a trooper because I, at one point, I wanted to photograph her out of her wheelchair. And I had wanted her to lay down on her side on the grass, which she couldn't do, so she had to lay on her back. So I said to her boyfriend, I said, would you mind laying behind her so that she could be on her side and supporting her? Which they, ne they had never had a picture like that of themselves. Wow. You know? And I was able to do something because I took a chance to ask. And you have to also be prepared when you're doing something like this and you're working with people, whether it's in a hospital, you have to sit down. You, you need to ask, but you have to be prepared for someone to say no also. And you say, okay, you know, you can't always get what you want, you know. Um, but, you know, had I not taken that chance for her to do that, but I was very respectful. And there were certain things I would have loved to been able to do, I couldn't do. But, you know, and I couldn't put her in the positions, but... I, I'm so grateful to be able to share with her something that I don't know that she, she certainly never had and had before, nor maybe she'll ever have in the future, especially with her boyfriend, you know. So that was really cool. Yeah, that's a beautiful story. Just just a beautiful story. And and you said something really amazing that I want to come back to in a second. Guys, we, we see, I do see your questions. We're going to get them answered, I promise. But something you said in there was when, he, when she talked about her sunny disposition and how people said, you know, you have such a sunny disp disposition despite having this disease. And her response was just amazing. And I think it's a really great life lesson for us all. And I was having conversations with other people about this this week. So it's some really um, timely topic is just, we've got to relearn how to see us and everybody else as humans first, mm -hmm. as not our disease, not, um, you know, our orientation, our race, our religion, like we have to learn to see each other as human beings first. And I think that response was just, just uh, um, an amazing response from her. That's just, just, oh, just, just phenomenal. Um, which is why I'm just going to say, which is why my blog is called Our Collective Humanity. Exactly. <laughs> right, that's exactly. All that about. So I haven't done enough of them, but it's all about finding people, you know, seeing that we're all the same, you know. So did you want to share those photos really quick uh, that you took, or do you want to come back to those in a little bit? Well, I don't, let me see if I can, let me see if I can just, all right, I'll do that. It would make more sense, but you know, I'm not so good at this. All right, yeah, I think I, okay, let's see. So, all right, so I have to screen share. So I'm going to put it on that. All right, so should I go to share screen? Go to share screen, yep. And okay. then you'll have to check it twice. So to make sure that you, you okay. share the, there okay. we go. Yeah. Yes, there we go. Beautiful. Let me, so that's her. Now, I the light went down, so I really wanted to be backlit. And if we're coming to, didn't happen. Did I want to fix those plants better? Yes. Was I, Was she really late? Yes. So it is what it is. So I, I you know, but then this is her, this is her boyfriend who never planned on being in the pictures and that's his daughter. I just going to show you that's them laying on the ground, which wow. I just love that picture. Love, love, love that picture. And then here's her, this is one that she wanted to do actually. She had an idea to do that one. So that's that. All right. So you can and, and Angie and Zoom, her blog is called Our um, Collective Humanity. If you go out, which you're on Zoom, so let me see if I can throw the link out for you in, in Zoom chat. You guys that are watching on YouTube, if you look in the description of the video, you can find a link to Lisa's web, web page and her blog is on there as well. I'm going to throw that out there for you guys in chat. Um, definitely check it out. You guys will be blown away with the work that you see there. It's just her photos are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And she's, I think you've got some some images that you want to share with us as well, right? Some some stuff that you have printed. What's the What's the story behind the book? Okay, I'm just going to show this one thing because I've been doing this. This is this is the only thing that I ever did from start to finish. I'm a little ADD if you haven't noticed. But I had tried to, I got very close to getting this published. Someday I might redo this. But I but this is also done on laser printing. And I didn't know how to do anything digital. This is before I was digital. So I, this was done on print on film. This is not a these are slides. But I had done this this book called Life Was Little Lessons A through Z. And I had done this, and I'm just going to read it real quick, and I'll just show you this one picture. 
it was a children's book. Light hair, dark hair, and different types of skin, freckles and curls and dimpled chins. So look inside and what do you see? The same made hearts within you and me. D is for different. So I'm just going to show that because that really, that says it all. Beautiful. Yes. Okay. And that Absolutely. Absolutely. And really quick, I got a question for you from Brandy in, in, in chat. So she, she says that she was an RN for 20 years and retired in February to start her photography business. So first of all, Brandy, thank you so much for your service in the medical industry field. You guys are heroes. My mom was an RN as well. A lot of love for you guys. And congratulations on your retirement. Uh, hopefully that's an exciting chapter for you. But she says that she would uh, she wants to look for ways to give back. Um, and she would love to do what you do. Can you give her some ideas? Tell her how she might be able to get started. Are there certain organizations that she can contact? Yeah, you feel free to you know give out my email because I will okay. definitely I, I would be happy to have a conversation on the phone with you about it. But this is just a really hard time because I was just going to start something new before COVID happened, and I was going to work with a children's hospital on the on the west coast of Florida, and I was also going to work with a. a, a like a dementia is a center down in Miami. Like that. But, you know, right now is just a hard time. So you understand because nobody can go visit. But I think that, um, although, you know, I would say that you can definitely get a hold of the, like work with the social workers, the child life department, or if you want to do, not everybody can do what I do. And I'm happy to talk about that, but working with the palliative care team. And I would be happy to tell you how to go about doing that. But you have to, you know, I think you have to be, this is the thing about doing philanthropy and when I travel, and I was talking about this before, you have to really make a commitment and people are not so quick to let you do it. And you have to show that you are in good faith, you know, uh, be willing to, to, to do it. And it, it takes some effort sometimes to get to the right person. I would think at a, um, the marketing, you could maybe go to the marketing people. That's not how I went in. I went in through foundations. There were a couple of children's cancer foundations that I worked with. Actually, one of the guys worked in the hospital, which was the Love Gen Foundation from Jordan National Children's Hospital. But then when I was in, um, when I was in, also when I was in Houston, when my brother was getting proton radiation, I couldn't get anyone at the hospital to let me work with kids. There's all kinds of HIPAA stuff and all that stuff. So what I would do was, which I, yeah, this was pretty nervy on my part, but when I would go to the radiation center and I would see people with their kids, parents with their kids, I would go up into him and say, I said, I know you don't know me. Please go see my website. I'm the real deal, but this is just what I do. Can I offer you pictures? And I did photograph four children when I was in Houston um, through, through that, well, three children, I'm sorry, three children there. But that was from going up to people. But I and I have found people also at at things like that. I, I will go up to people, but you've got to be fearless and and ask. And lots of people will say no. And you know, um, maybe also starting to yeah volunteer with people that you do know. Go ask and start building a repertoire. You know, you know, as a nurse, I'm sure you have access to people that you know that are, that other people wouldn't. And start building a portfolio or just start doing it. And then have Absolutely. some. Absolutely. And, and a quick question from Lynn on YouTube. He says, um, what pushback, if any, do you get when you approach a nonprofit? Uh, I've had plenty of them that absolutely ignore me, you know, but I, you know, but I just finally decided that I, you know, I said, yeah, maybe I should be working for nonprofits and getting paid for it. So I thought, okay, I'm going to actually, then COVID happened, but I, I don't, most of the time I don't get paid for it. So um and they're, and they're smaller nonprofits. Like if I have a local children's charity called the Jessica Dunes Children's Cancer Foundation. So I became friends with, I volunteered for their organization. I did, uh, you know, I helped with, it's not just, I don't just do the photography sometimes, but I would help with the fundraisers. So I got to know them and they got to trust me. And then they knew that uh, they wouldn't be a problem and knew that I could deal with the kids. So now I would, and then I would call them up and I say, listen, do you have any kids in your advocacy program that would like a picture? And that's how I did it. I recently photographed a baby, um, you know, a few months ago who at two months old was diagnosed with cancer. And then um, I photographed her at four months old. And then and recently because the baby just got over COVID and is doing stem cell transplant. But that's how I, you know, but, but I have a relationship, you know, I, and I do a lot of portraits through her and through another foundation. You know, awesome. But, but some people just say no. They just don't. They don't want to do it, and that's okay too. It's understandable. 
Absolutely. Um, so you've shared a couple of, a, a lot of stories with me, but can you just share maybe a story uh, from a shoot or something that you did that really had um, a really big impact on, on you as a person, as a photographer? I think I was telling you about a, and I mentioned this like when I was in Houston. So I mentioned Henry, was that the one I should tell? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. So I had, um, yeah, but I, well, I'll, I'll go through a quick one too. Or I was in Cuba and I was trying to do service. And I'll tell you what, go into a communist country where they don't share, that's not easy. So you, I, you know, talk about getting pushback. People don't want to, you can't go, you can't go into a hospital. You're not going to go any place like that. So I would just, I knew my friend who was Cuban, she helped me out and her son had cancer actually in, in, in Cuba. And then came, they actually came to live in the United States. And I had photographed her, her son here and we became friends. And when I went to Cuba, um, she turned me on to somebody and I had gotten to two people um, one was a child who was HIV positive, and then, but I'm going to tell the story of this girl who had cancer. This is outside of Havana in Matanzas. So I had photographed her, and then I had gone back there, um, and I had come and brought the pictures back to Cuba. And I had gone, and then I went to their house, which was sparse is an understatement. They had so little. And I said, and I gave them all these prints that I had, I had, had printed. And then when I went back there, then I said to them, listen, let me, let me do the whole family. I said, let me do some more portraits because I had just done some quick pictures for them. And then when I went back there the next day, I saw they had a room with nothing in it except for one frame. And it was the picture that I had photographed of this daughter. So, you know, you don't realize what things that we take for granted is a big deal to somebody else. But I'm going to just tell you another, this is a long story, so I have to make it quick. So I had been... I had actually been volunteering for a rehab center that had um, were for mothers with their children. So they didn't, they, they go into recovery and they get to keep their kids. And I had been doing these pictures for Mother's Day. And there was one little boy there and his hat was really beat up with a Miami Heat hat, the, the, the basketball team. And I said, okay, at least maybe you better, when you bring those prints back, this kid needs a new hat. So consequently then just co coincidentally, I had been involved with another thing for kids in foster care. And I was doing, it was around the holidays and I was getting gifts for teenagers in foster care because they get very little. So I had been going to an odd part of town and I had, you know, this sort of, I know this is a long story, but it's just, it's just the circumstances were so bizarre. But I was in a town, part of town I never go to on a street that I'm never in. And I have to buy something for a luncheon. And I see this guy, Back here is a picture of the guy, this guy in the street. He's wearing a, oh, he's wearing this white tuxedo and on the back it says number one heat fan. And I said, hmm, well, maybe I can get something from this guy. He's, you know, a heat fan. So I go into this restaurant, this place, this place that I, I don't know, and I come back out and there's this guy there. And I, I said to him, hey, listen, I, I, I'm going to, you know, going, I need to get something for this kid. I want to, do you, would you recommend anything? And he tells me, well, there's a sports authority. And then he goes, he says, well, wait a minute. Does, it, does he read? How old is he? And I said, you know what? I'm really not sure how old he is. And I knew that he may or may not, you know. And I said, but then he went and he took out, a, he took out these books. And then I said, okay. I could see he was in sort of a beat up car. And I, I said, I knew, well, I was going to buy a couple of the books from him. And he told me to make the book, make the check out to a church. So he was he raising money for his church. And I always get emotional when I tell the story. But what I didn't say also is that it was a few months later, I don't know, a few months earlier, through Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital and this foundation, the Love Gen Foundation, I had photographed this boy named Henry, who was a terminal, he was terminal, and he was a teenager, probably. I don't know exactly how old he was. He was a, you know, he was, he was young. And I photographed him not long before he died. And um, I had been, uh, I, okay, so I just want you to tell you that. So I'm sitting there and I'm talking to this man and I'm telling you, it was months later. It wasn't years later 
and I'm, I'm giving him this, you know, so all these weird circumstances and I'm giving this man, um, I can't, sorry, I'm being, I'm all over the place. It's okay. So I'm buying, I'm buying a book and he, and then I see, then he wants to sign the book for me and he opens the book and I see this picture and I'm going, what is that doing there? This is a picture of Henry that I had photographed just months before. This man, I had been to this funeral and I don't go to a lot of funerals, but I had been, I really love this family and I had been to this funeral and he spoke at the funeral because his daughter had grown up with Henry's mother. And that's what it was. And I'm telling you, I felt when that happened, it was like, I just know that, you know, there's an expression and I'm, I always say I'm very spiritual, but I, I, I don't have blind faith and I'm not a religious person, but there's an expression that says coincidences are God's ways of remaining anonymous. And to me, I have never, whenever I think of Henry, I feel touched by God. I felt that this was, you know, this was Henry. And he is like, whenever I connect to, you know, a higher power or something, and I think of guardian angels or something, usually Henry comes to mind. And now that, that's the kind of stuff that happens when you get to do what I do. You know, that's really a beautiful story. I mean, for me, that just sounds like confirmation that you were doing what you were supposed to do and and, and just the confirmation such a beautiful story thank you so much for sharing that I, I know you get emotional every time you tell it but it is such a beautiful story i definitely think that people need this and in fact we have people saying on on youtube chat as well as in zoom that they needed to hear this and thank you so much for sharing that so again thank you so much i think we're going to take a quick break i know i need some tea and some water I don't know if you do, but we're going to have Dennis jump on here. You and I are going to turn our cameras and our audio off. We're going to let Dennis talk to everybody for a second, and then we will hop back on and answer more questions. I know we've got more things to talk about. So guys, if you have questions for Lisa, for me, make sure that you get those in the chat because we're going to answer those and we'll be right back. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Hi, hi, hi. I'm Dennis with Zenfolio, customer success. Again, welcome you all for hanging out with us uh, during this Thursday episode of Zenfolio Live. Um, I'm really grateful for this timely topic on philanthropy and the importance of giving and contributing to community during, uh, especially these really um, difficult and uh, challenging times. So thanks for joining and being interested in learning uh, how to be there for, for each other, um, which is very important. Um, we're happy to take any Zenfolio related questions. So please let us know if you have any questions. Uh, we're happy to answer them live. So just enter them in chat. And if you're using Zoom, you may use that Q&A button to send your questions over to us. Uh, so please let us know uh, what you'd like to know. And finally, before I hand it off back to uh, my good friend, Robert, uh, please check in again. Next week, everyone, as we learn about uh, these new features that Zenfolio offers and host special guests uh, for discussions that can um, ultimately help your photography business become more successful. So uh, check in again and thank you all. And uh, back to you, Robert. Thank you, Dennis. Again, thank you so much for hanging out with me on Thursdays, Dennis. I really appreciate it. He does such a such a great job taking care of you guys in chat. So make sure that you say thank you to him. I could not do this without him. Uh, he's such a huge help. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and have Lisa come back on. We're going to grab a couple of questions from you guys in chat. And then I've got some more things we're going to talk about. And we'll kind of wrap it up. But guys, if you have questions, definitely make sure that you get those in the chat. Uh, so uh, I'm going to kind of take this question. Well, I, I guess I'll let us both kind of answer this question really quick. This is from somebody on YouTube, 410 Aerial Photography and Inspection. They said, um, for your website, do you prefer PNG files or do you prefer JPEG files on your site? <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe you're asking me. I'm such a... I'm letting person. you have a take on it. Yeah, I, I use JPEGs. I don't even know. I, you're asking the wrong person. So um, 410, for that, I would say what I recommend is you typically uh, JPEG files, usually your, um, your high resolution JPEG files, because when you upload files to Zenfolio, 
Um, we actually never show the full resolution file on your website. So we actually take that image and we store it. We don't alter it and we generate preview images to load on your website. So sometimes right after you upload an image, uh, then you might see a little spinny wheels in the gallery. That's us generating the preview images. And that's why that happens because we actually generate the low web resolution images for your site. Uh, the other reason that I recommend JPEG is just because when the images are sent to print, I believe that they are compressed to JPEG anyway. So it's nice to go ahead and just upload those full resolution JPEG files. Hopefully uh, that gave you a good answer to that question. Um, really quick, Lisa, um, let's see. Can you, so you shared the story about Henry um, and you, you kind of shared your images uh, some of the images that you uh, had taken from your shoot this weekend, but what is a story? And I know you were telling me a little bit about, I think it was in Bali, uh, a story that you feel um, had an impact on, on, on some, on other families or other people, you know, that whether it's related directly to the work that you were doing or just that you got to be a part of an experience from just being involved. Well, I, I think that when you're talking about Bali and you're talking about third world countries, that was that wasn't so easy. There's another place that was hard for me. I had to be really tenacious to find a foundation, but I got to found a foundation, and I, you know, they didn't know me or trust me so so much. So believe me, that was not easy. But I, I kind of didn't take no for an answer. I, I, I kept well, kind of, but I, um, I got to go. I found a foundation that works with, you know, people. You know, when you you don't understand like in this country, like this, just even photographing someone with a disability, you realize you can't go on the grass, you know, depending on the wheelchair, you know, especially, or you have to, you know, you look at depending on some people are more mobile than others. So there it's impossible when you're in a, in the country and you're on mountains. So people are, if you're disabled, you are pretty much, you know, I mean, I don't, it's not pretty, let's put it that way. And I was able to go in places up into the mountains and go and, I mean, I had experiences. I do have some pictures on that. Um, I do have a slideshow that I put together real quickly while you and I were waiting, but I'll show you one of them that, that's from Bali. Yes, that's please, please. Possible. But um, so, you know, it, it's just, uh, you get to see and experience life, what it's really like, you know, Bali, everybody goes to Bali and thinks that it's all yoga and all that stuff. And that's part of it, but that's not, you know, the, that's not for the Balinese. That's for the tourists that come to it. You know, it's an, and it's an amazing place and it's beautiful and they do a beautiful job in it, but that's not how typically how Balinese people live. You know? So it's, it's great to be able to see. I always want to go to how people live. As photographers, it's great because we get to, we want to, you know, like I would go to Asia and I go, no, don't take me to, you know, take me someplace different. I just want to go to the town, just go to a small, you want to see how people live. You don't want to, because, the tourist places you're never going to really get you know and we have a great opportunity as photographers because everybody likes pictures of taking their pictures and you know show somebody a picture that you take on the back of the camera it's an, it's an immediate in you know people love that absolutely absolutely and do you want to share that image really quick i would love to see that one uh okay. For your slideshow you said you had a slideshow well, I do have a slideshow and it has a little bit of my blog. Should I just do that, go through it real quick? Yeah, I'll... go ahead. While you're pulling that up, um, Brandy in Zoom says, thank you so much for sharing that information and for all of your stories. I'm glad that I'm on, not on camera because I'm ugly crying right now. Oh, so. that, makes, that makes me feel good. That's what you're supposed to do. That means you're human. Yes. That's not yes. Good. Well, let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to screen share. Let's see if I do this right. Okay, do you see my screen? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay, hold on one second. Now? There we go. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to go through this. Whoops. I'm going to do this quickly. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry. Calm down, Lisa. Okay. This is, all right. So I'll just cut. This is a girl that I photographed. You would never know that I picked up her wig from um, Make-A-Wish Foundation the, the, uh, the day before. And we met and I had no idea that she went into hospice the next day. And I'm going to tell you this about what it's like that people don't understand. This is a single mother. And when I went to bring her pictures, she was living in a house with a, with a bed and a TV. And so when she was in hospice, she chose to go in the hospital so she wouldn't be alone. 
So people don't understand what it's like for people that are single mothers when you have a child with cancer or any kind of disability. And I think that we have to show a lot of empathy because we just don't really get it. And this was the day before she went into hospice. You would have wow. never known. And look how beautiful wow. she is. Beautiful. I made her beautiful. Like, and she liked being a model. So I made her look very modely. This is actually, he's quite famous. He has a big blog and she has a disease called KT. I don't know, that looks soft there. I don't know why. Or maybe it's the resolution. And I photographed her. She's an amazing. His name is Claudina. Her name is Joanne Tricani. I did a, uh, I did a blog on her. Wow. And that's her with her family. Now, I love this picture because if you see on there, how can I do like this? This child has no idea that this woman looks as scary as she does because she grew up with her and all she sees is this is my right. girl that I love. So I happen to really love these pictures. And this is a girl who um, has some gender identity problems. And she put that, I met her at a pride march and I did a story on her and she has the hard days will come to remind herself that the hard days are gonna come again, but the good days are gonna come again. So that's to remind her because she was suicidal and self Absolutely. And this is, uh, this is Nicole Zimmerman who, I don't know why these pictures aren't like going fully uh, sharp. I don't know why that is, but. The, they look sharp on this. This is the, the bride you said that you did, right? Yeah. This Last is minute. Bride. Yeah, she died two weeks later after this. This is the hospital. You would never know that the pain and what she was going and that her, that's her husband on the left-hand side. That was her. Wow. Okay. This is in Haiti and the next few slides are in Haiti. This is an, or oh no, let me go back. This is an orphanage in Haiti. And I make sure that I take a picture of every one of these kids. There were a lot of them. I photographed them all individually, not just group shots for the foundation. And I printed every one and delivered all of them back. I had them sent back there. This is my friend who passed away from COVID two weeks ago. And he's a very famous dancer, Francois Zoni. And wow. um, if you go to my blog, you can look him up. He's a fascinating person. And, no one should have to die alone, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, that's him also with, with another, uh, my friend's son. He's, he's, a, he's a great dancer like him. He's also wow. And this is a blog I did because this guy here, <clears throat> he had a, this fellow here, I met him. He's, I kept seeing him at all these special needs. I used to shoot these dances for special needs. And this guy was always the most positive. It's like, it was always, hi, Miss Lisa, and always so positive. I just had to know him and I just wanted to know him. And he was obviously way more high functioning and intelligent than the people that were as he was around. And when I did a blog on him and I got to know him and his family, you can see here, this is where he had a brain injury and he was a drug addict and he was like a crabby, not a terribly nice guy. And he now says, I'm the luckiest man alive because it made him into the person he is today. Wow. So it was an amazing story. That's him. He's, he's just, He's just unbelievable. I love him, love him, love him. Okay, wow. this is and this is a uh, this is a story about a girl who was sex trafficked for a long time of her life and suffers from trauma from, from sex trafficking. Wow. And this is a fun one, but this is an interesting story because this is a guy. There's an all male dance company in New York City called the Ballet Trocadero, and and he was doing the Dying Swan, which is a famous uh, from uh, Swan Lake. And he, he is married to a guy, a Muslim man, who has basically been disowned by his family. So this was a, also, and they were very easy to share with me. This is, is a Vietnam, uh, no, he's not a Vietnam vet. He's a vet, um, an Iraq vet. And that's his dog that helps him deal with the trauma, uh, PTSD that he felt from, and he's also a firefighter. So he deals with his own demons and that's his dog. And the story is about his dog. Wow. This is also in Haiti. These are all faces of Haiti. So these are the individual portraits I did in Haiti. These are all Haiti. Um, this is in Bali. This is a man who fell down the steps uh, of a ladder. And, and now he lives, I mean, he was always smiling. He's a quadriplegic. His wife is completely dedicated. And when you have, when you live in a country like that and there is a lot of like superstition, so they've been pretty ostracized because they think that, you know, it's, it, they're very superstitious. And he, she lives with her son and this guy. And I, I will say 
they didn't have a bed. I actually bought this guy a bed because I couldn't stand that he couldn't sit up because they didn't even have a bed that he could sit up. So this is from a foundation called Soul Man Foundation. This is the one. And this is them. This is the girl. This is a woman who has lived by herself, this woman here. They found her. She was living, basically, you can see how dirty she is. And so this girl here is so unbelievable. And here she is giving her a bath and cleaning her up. And, and this, she is a saint. This woman's a saint. She's, she was a nurse. And then she went and she volunteered for this foundation. He started this foundation. And he's, yeah, it's, it's an amazing foundation in Bali that helps you know, people that are you know, differently able. This is, I, I told Robert, I think she should be on Zenfolio. She's a photographer now. This is, uh, I don't know how many years ago she had cancer. She is now cancer free. She's a remarkable girl and a great photographer. So she started, this is Henry. This is Henry and his mom. Right so beautiful. This is Henry and his mom. This is Ashley now. I know they're out of order because I did this really quickly. <laughs> this is Ashley now. Um, wow. This is, she's doing great. She is a cancer survivor. Zoe is battling for her life right now. She's a, she also has cancer and she's a Sloan Kettering right now. You know, battling for her life. And they have an amazing bond, these two, uh, these two girls. And here she is, she's the horseback rider and she took Zoe on her horse. That's and she's a, this, that was beautiful to watch the two of them together. This is in MD Anderson. This is in, this is what I call Horse Whisperer. This is a little girl also, a can, she's a cancer survivor. Very often you'll see them, they wear superhero costumes. And I just thought this was great. This horse is great. And it looks like she's telling like the horse what to do. So I love it. it does. Yeah. This is another little girl. She did not survive cancer in Houston with the same horse. This horse was amazing. I just love the way the horse came up and looked into her book. This is Trinity. So I'm, I'm not trying to make you guys cry. Okay, and then I move on to, <laughs> yeah. Then I, now I have begun in this last year, I started to photograph flowers. Okay, well there, so now I incorporate, this is in Cuba. This is at a nursing home in Cuba and I can't get the pictures there because I can't get back to Cuba. So I was going to go back to Cuba right before you know, the, the lockdown in March to deliver these pictures, but I wasn't able to do wow. that. Um, but this is in Cuba. And this is also, oh, he's, wow. this is a cancer survivor. He's doing great. This is the guy who was his mother. Um, they had come from Cuba. This is, I, I shot this in Cuba. Wow. Uh, this is also in Cuba. This is a little girl, this girl was born, she was born HIV positive. This is her sister, whose mother took the drugs. She was negative. And then her younger sister were born HIV positive. Um, this is the girl with cancer in Cuba in Matanzas. This is the picture in this empty room with her. Oh, wow. That was the one, the, the picture that you took, right? The photo that you took? Yeah, that was, and that was just a quick picture that I took wow. uh, in next down the hall, you know, in the hall. And this is me handing out the pictures to her. Uh, that's my sister, actually. Yeah, okay. And then I turn into, yeah, this is when I, well, I'm just like quickly. So then, then I started in this last year um, because of COVID. I had started taking pictures of flowers. Um, and because of COVID, I decided that I can't do, I had to do a switch up. And now I'm doing a, a, a store to sell images of flowers. And it's interesting. I'm all over the place. And then what's interesting about it is, is that as I started writing content, I realized that the me of who I feel started coming out. Those are little bugs. Those are minute little eggs hanging upside up underneath a leaf. I wow. turned the leaf over and photographed it. And then this is what I'm making is called dry erase boards. And this is because this is who I am. So this is sort of like an affirmation board. Very um, beautiful, very beautiful stuff. And this is, you know, uh, the serenity prayer thing sort of things because it's interesting because once you start and this is once again affirmation board, and also um, I'm I'm going to be doing pictures that are just strictly pictures. But you know what's happening for me is what what's important to me. And this is May Lynn, but I showed you these already. But I think that here's another one from uh, Martin Luther King, um, a, a quote. But I I think okay that's enough. I'm done. I'll stop. Um, I I think that what's interesting when you start doing content creating and you take the time like. I didn't know that I could write. I always thought that I couldn't write. I thought that I was like an illiterate that had no ability to do it. But once you, and you have to learn and you have to put the 10,000 hours in. Even taking pictures of flowers, I'm still not where I want to be. 
And the first ones I did were not that great. And I'm somebody who likes to be good at what I do. So I'm constantly, you know, I take a lot of crap to get something that I'm, that I'm happy with. So if you want to do something well, you've got to put your, put your time in. And that's what I'm trying to do with this. And what was interesting when I started to do the content and making descriptions, which is not me. I'm not like that because I don't consider myself a super, you know, I'm just not like that. I had to write. And then right. I started showing up. I started, you started to see, and then all of a sudden I started wanting to do, you know, quotes because that's what's important for me. And even though those may be a little more commercial and will sell probably, I'm going to sell them less than what my flower images, the fine art stuff, it's what's meaningful to me because that's who I am. So to me, it's great that I have found something that's an extension and I am, there's great apps that you can put on your sites now that you can, I don't know if Zenfolio is offering this yet, but you should look into it so that when people make sales, they have a choice to donate to charity. Yeah, right. You know, so that's great. Definitely. And you don't have to do anything. So I can just say, I want to give 10% to charity and they do all of that, take it out the same way Zenfolio does everything because you can't expect me to. Right. Not, most of us aren't. Right. I don't want to do that. Right. Well, unfortunately, I got to cut us off. It is three, but um, I do want to answer a couple of questions really quickly. So this is for Robert in YouTube chat. He said that, uh, let me pull the question back up. Uh, once, where do you go? Once uh, the base price for a vendor and service fees are used on my website price list, what is the duration these base price or service fees are valid? So I'm not sure I understand that question exactly, Robert, but what I think you're asking is, how long are the vendor prices and service fees going to remain the same? Um, I don't really have a, an answer for that, but what I can tell you is that we there are no changes without notifications. So if the service fee for some reason is changed, we email everybody well ahead of time and let you guys know. Also, if prices from the labs have changed, before that's implemented on Zenfolio, we do email everybody way ahead of time and let you guys know. Now, as far as how long are those fees valid for, the only thing I can say is that I'm not aware of any changes in the past year. So hopefully that kind of comes close to answering your question. Um, and then for Brandy on Zoom, she said, what is the best ratio to choose when editing photos so that when I print them, I don't lose so much of my image due to cropping um, and I normally leave them in the aspect, the original aspect ratio, but I lose a good bit when printing. So my answer to that is a couple of things. I would definitely think about the size that you are printing, about the size of the products that you're offering. One thing that I typically try to do is I try to build my camera's as or not my camera's aspect. I try to build my price list based on my camera's aspect ratio. So if I crop my images in post or edit them, I, hello, my great Dane just woke up. Uh, if I crop my images in post, I crop them. I maintain that original three, two aspect ratio. And then every print product that I offer for sale falls into that three through aspect ratio. That way nothing is ever cropped off of the image. Now there's a video you can check out on our YouTube channel. It talks about building a price list, knowing your camera's aspect ratio and maximum print size. So definitely just go to our YouTube channel, type in aspect ratio and that video should pop up. Um, the downside to doing it that way is that you can't sell things like eight by tens, five by sevens, or four by sixes, because those are actually all three different aspect ratios. I have to offer things like eight by twelves, four by sixes, 16 by 24s. Um, but by doing that, you don't lose anything in the cropping of the image when it's, when it's printed out. Everything prints exactly as you took it or as you edited it. So something to think about. Lisa, any final thoughts that you want to leave uh, everybody with? before we hop off of here. Okay, this is the dumb thing. I'm going to thank you for asking me to do this. And then I'm, I'm really excited that I, you, I, I'm really excited to share with all you guys. And I hope that, you know, I hope that I inspire you to do something because, you know, if we just make the world a little bit better for one person that we will be for life, you know, that's, that's what I like to say the eulogy values. I didn't make that up, but not your, your value there. I'll just end really quickly that there was a study done in, a long-term study in Harvard and basically people realize that it's like 70 years and they look back at people and say, what would you have done differently in life? Spend time with your family, do more service. What's really important? So do they, even when you croak, do they, do you care that they said you were a great photographer or you were a great person or you helped other people? You know, you just said, what, what's really important? You know? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. I could not agree with you more. So thank you again so much for joining us. Thank you on YouTube, Robert, Lynn, uh, Elena. Let's see who else hung out with us. 14 Aerial Photography, Rocco, uh, Jennifer, and then on Zoom. I know some of you guys have had to hop off, but um, let me just shout some of you guys out really quick who joined us. Brandy, Carolyn, Derek, Earl, Elaine, Kathleen, Kelly, anybody else that I missed. Angie, thank you guys for hanging out with us. Um, don't forget Site Review Tuesday, uh, every single Tuesday, same time, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern on our YouTube channel, as well as on Zoom. And then we're going to do this again on Thursday. Next Thursday, we're talking about using Facebook and Instagram's marketplace to sell your photos. So make sure that you come check that out. We're going to talk about how you connect your Zenfolio e-commerce to that. Uh, so it's going to be really interesting. And um, as Lisa's saying, and I, as I try to say every time we, we hop off of here, Go do something good for somebody. Lift somebody up, encourage somebody, um, give somebody some of your time and let's all work together to make this world a better place because it could really, really use it right now. Until next week, I hope that you guys all have a wonderful and safe weekend. I'll see you guys again on Tuesday. Bye, Lisa. Thank you again for joining Bye. us. Bye, everybody. Bye.